Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us. This is exciting. My name is Cameron. I'll introduce the team and we'll go around and do some quick introductions. But I want to thank you for joining us for this session on building NYC stories with data kits. So just to, I'll hand it off to my team here as well. My name is Cameron. I'm the founder of Data Stories. And my background is I'm a learning scientist and a computer scientist. So what brings me to the work? I'll hand it off to Alan. Hi, hi good morning. Oh, good afternoon, everyone. So my name is Alan Hillary. I'm the VP of Community and Impact. My background is an analytical background, and I'm very passionate about data storytelling and data literacy. I talk about the underserved communities, but also just across the academic space. And I want to pass it off to Jordan. Oh, hi. I'm Jordan Cronon. I'm an educator by trade, and so I've been doing that for about 10 years. And just within that, I have an interest in data and like working with students on data literacy. So my role here is um, working on the curriculum that, we, that you're going to see today. Hopefully, we can work through and learn something new. All right. Thank you. So just to give you an idea of data stories and who we are and why we exist, it's a, we're a nonprofit, and our goal is really just we have this mission. Passionate about data, we're passionate about data literacy and about education and empowering people. The bottom line is those who have the data have the power. Really an opportunity and a chance for us to create different solutions that can bring data into communities, into schools, and that's really our main focus. And so as an organization, we have a professional division and we have an educational division and we work with K-12 and universities as well as small businesses. So we're really focused on, there's all this data, how can we turn around and really create an impact? And at the same time, we really are focused on an interdisciplinary approach. I imagine just about everybody in here is thinking about data and how to communicate it. So that's what our contribution is. We're really looking at this and saying, how can we make programs that are embedded in communities and that are sustainable? So if we're working with schools or working with businesses, we really want that to be a core for us. It's a workshop. It's not a presentation. So that's the presentation. And really what we want to do is really spend the rest of this time going through the data kits and walking through that experience and showing you what that's all about. Like I mentioned, my background is as a learning scientist and Alan's an analyst and George's an educator and we all really wanted that to be a main focus of our work and to make sure that as we approach me personally, I always think of education as a designed space, right? It's not a naturally occurring thing. You don't go into nature and see animals in rows listening to somebody, right? So as a designed experience, how could we make this the most concise and compelling experience that we could? And that's what you have in front of you are the data kits. So I'm going to just, we've got all the links here. And I'll leave this up once we go through. I'll just do a quick walkthrough of what a data kit is and orient you to that. And then from there, the rest of the time is really, we're hoping that you'll break off into groups of two or three, or if you want to work by yourself, that's why we're here. We're going to walk through that experience. And we've been around since May, June of 2020. So born in the pandemic. This is our first time in a physical workshop like this. We've done virtual workshops with the data kits. So this is a new experience for us. So I'm excited. And as we're walking around, feel free to say, oh, we like this or not so much this, but we've been iterating on this design. So we're really excited to share that. Who here was in the squirrels session? Anybody go to the squirrels? Okay. Um, so it was, it was uh, not getting a there we go. I wanted to zoom in a little bit. The basic premise of a data kit is it's a one page tear sheet, right? It's something that if you're teaching this to a student or if you're looking at data and you want to communicate this to a particular population and have them engage with it, the idea for us is really we want it to just give a brief overview, a guiding question at the top, a quick synopsis. What is this topic all about? general walkthrough, some hyperlinks, and then really the first part here, and we do encourage you to do this. I really hope as we go through this that you'll dive into each section so you can get familiar with the topic. So the first part is really just to orient you. So as you're looking at it and it says, okay, read this article or check out this report. And then 
actually go in and jot down some phrases. So that way you're not only just absorbing the information, but you're engaging with that information. So that's the first part. The second part is to actually go into the data itself. And we are here at Open Data Week. These are all open data sets. So you'll see that we've actually pulled them into Google Sheets. If you feel comfortable playing around in that space, you're more than welcome to do that. There are actually links to the data on the Open Data website. So you can play around in that space as well. And what we do here is really focus on what you have as far as the data, Q&A, and the data dictionary. And so if you are new to data and this is your first foray, I don't know if there's anybody in here, we can orient you to that. But if you're quite familiar, it should be standard form. See the different pieces. And I'll dive into what that Q&A looks like. What you've got here, a couple of some guiding questions on two different sides. And then we encourage you to start making the visualizations. And then, of course, the last part is to go ahead and create. And what's really cool, like part of what drives us is that when we talk about storytelling, it doesn't have to look standard, right? This is very much a creative endeavor. And how do you communicate this information? So, of course, a blog post with embedded visualizations is great. It's not bad. But if you can make a YouTube video, do a Twitter thread, go on TikTok, there are different ways of communicating this information. And that's what we really find exciting is to be able to take that and say, let's go ahead and communicate this out. And so we give you a couple of resources to talk about that and some basic, here's a link for storytelling. So if you're more on the data side and you're not really familiar with how to structure a story, we link to some basic resources if you had something. I just wanted to add something. Um, I just wanted to add too um, that part of the mission for us and part of the drive for this is to make data accessible to everyone. So being, being that I had a very analytical career, I still have one. There are a lot of people who feel they have imposter syndrome when it comes to data or they may not feel that data is for them or they're not a data person. So a lot of what we do is to show people that data is everywhere, number one, and you can pick topics like baby names or squirrels, Link NYC and Wi-Fi hotspots, and you can begin to become more familiar with data. So it's letting the community know that it's accessible. You know, it's not just for corporate people or maybe people who are in higher education or institutions and that it's out there and that you can start getting familiar with data yourself and you can tell stories in a way that's comfortable to you. It's not always graphs and charts. It can be YouTube videos. That's what Cameron mentioned. And also just being able to tell that story. So that's the other part. Like it's not just analyzing data. So we were just in a workshop or presentation where we read about New York City squirrels. And the person leading the workshop was a writer. Or writer. writer. Yeah. Or, yeah. Or, and then there was people on his team who were artists and who were also scientists. So while like, his presentation was looking at it from a more scientific aspect, like you're going to come in here and see that there is a social justice theme that's been put around these data kits. And so there's just so many things that can come out of this. And so just, you know, there's pretty And with that, I think that's the end of the stand and deliver for us. So at this point, I'm going to leave this slide up here so you can go directly to the links. As a nonprofit, we don't actually charge for access to these materials. So on the data stories website, if you sign up, then you can get access to all the other data kits that we've created. After today, we printed out the most recent ones, and you'll see there's also one from last month. And so we have a whole, we have a collection of data kits that we continue to build. So just something to keep in mind. But please jump in, open up one of these links, and we'll walk around and help you get started. All right, great. So let's go ahead, we'll circle back. Alan's going to help us. We'll take some notes, but we'd like to get your feedback on this experience. Good, bad. We've already had some conversations about the structure being a good structure. If you're new to this and getting oriented, other thoughts or feedback on the experience itself? Anything that you'd like to see that you said, oh, I'm going through this, but I'd like to see blank, or I feel like something is missing. Yes. Got you. In general, that might be, I mean, we could do it 
actually physically why we're here. That could be one way to do that. Another way might be to have a video walkthrough. I think a video walkthrough might be a nice, concise way to do that. So I definitely appreciate that. Awesome. Hello. It's all good. Um, any other thoughts or suggestions? Thank you for that. I appreciate that. <laughs> Answer key. We don't. We just generally regenerated the questions and thought these are the two main buckets that we wanted to tackle. So some of them are very direct, explicit questions about the data. And then the other analysis questions, of course, are meant to give you some prompts to think more deeply about the experience, starting to guide you. I will say we try to be Switzerland, so to speak. I know Switzerland took a side, but right, we're trying to be neutral in our approach. So as you're reading through it, ideally, it's not swaying one way or the other, because I feel like we feel generally that's sort of the best way to... Yeah, a question more than I thought. I'm, I'm interested in why you chose to copy the data set into Google Sheets rather than do it inside the open data portal. It's a good question. And I think that's mostly a carryover from some of our previous data sets and our previous data kits. So I definitely think, and did you have a thought on that? Yeah, these data places are generated. And also the ISO, some of the open data, like, downloading raw data from the website, but there's a lot of sort of missing values and sometimes inconsistencies. What we really want to focus on is like the data storytelling. We want students to be able to manipulate that and be able to create a meaningful story and a visualization. We want to, we have discussed later on if we're going to like offer levels, which would, you know, sort of easy, medium, hard, which would offer students to that more technical aspects and maybe even incorporate some programming languages as well. Well, we want it to be sort of like low code and, and really focusing on telling that story rather than being involved down in technicalities. And I will add to that, that we definitely take a tidy data approach. We really think about making sure that data is nice and tidy for everybody. So as they're getting in, to Jordan's point, that's really our emphasis. But what are you thinking? Do you think we should sort of have both? I was just wondering, so what that one would add uh, an extra step of learning. But I guess in that context, do you, would you expect those students to know how to use Google Sheets? I, I, I wonder whether there's that extra step of, do you need to learn how to use Google Sheets? So that's a good point. And I will say this, if you look at the very fine print at the bottom, you'll see this is version 3.0. And version one and 1.5, we really took more of a instruct, um, more of an instructive approach. It was a two pager and it would say, okay, if you're not you're familiar with Google Sheets, then this is what you would do, right. that type of thing. So the jury's still out because you could go either way. And that's not a bad thing. But I think the question with this is this sort of a clean enough sequence sure. so that if we wanted to fill in, right, because we wanted to make a clean line from here's the data to here's the analysis to here's how you tell that story. And then if you need the ancillary pieces, then you can tack those on. But that's, that's the question that we're trying to tackle. Yeah. So, yeah. Definitely. Just, uh, kind of an open question. I love it. Thank you. Any other thoughts, questions, things like that. So how do you access more data kits? And I'll actually jump out to the site. Of course. Cool. So, if you go to the datastories.cc website, you go to join us, you sign up, then we put you into the members section. And this is where we have the data kits that we've created so far. With this session, we're actually launching the open data kits that we have for today, so those will get put up. But here you can see we started to pull from this. Big fans of the Tidy Tuesday project. Anybody know Tidy Tuesday? Know it, love it, good stuff? Definitely cool, worth checking out. But we've pulled from their data because it's, again, clean and easy and well-structured. So here you can see all of these different data kits. And again, this is our approach where we're thinking, okay, this is an enrichment after-school activity for a certain age. How can we bring in interesting data and make it compelling? Right. So if you sign up there, there's also a link to our data sets overview. Jordan and I were just mentioning to some people here that we actually have another guide that we just are finalizing. And we also have a club's leader guide. So if you wanted to run an after school program in an informal setting, we can walk through that as well. And then we also talked about weekend workshops, so training. So if you were 
you yourself are looking to bring this to an organization and you wanted to say, how do you get somebody from a basic knowledge of data to being able to tell some sort of a story? Alan and I, at the, sort of the first year of data stories, we led this weekend workshop and Alan is really the mastermind behind this. He built a lot of this. So thank you, Alan. But yes, so this is the weekend workshop. So when you sign up, you get access to all these materials and we're continuing to add more. So then here, a couple of things. Again, if you want to join us, please join us. If you want to get involved, we are looking for more hands and more input. Uh, we value people's opinions and we are very mindful of that we don't know everything. So moving right along and I'll close out with our last campaign. And we like to make these data kits. We like to make instructional materials, but we also thought, wouldn't it be cool to wear your data as well? And at the same time, make it socially responsive. So what we did last month for Black History Month is we worked with CAF Rise Above, which is a nonprofit organization that is focused on bringing about awareness around the Tuskegee Airmen. And they have a lot of data and there's the Tuskegee Airmen Challenge that Alan led on Twitter as well as the Dubois. Dubois Challenge 2022, hashtag yeah. so over Twitter as well as the Aaron Festival. So those have been two big things. And so this is a fun project for us. Thank you, and our time is up. And so these are just things that we're doing and it's on Twitter. If you follow us on Twitter and check us out there. But with that, We'll be hanging around. We'll be here for the rest of the day. That's the cowbell. Thank you so much for coming.